Welcome to the HymanCast, a podcast of the Hyman Settlement School, where we explore the history, culture, and people that make the Hyman Settlement School what it is today, and how this historic institution will continue to serve its mission of celebrating heritage and changing lives in Central Appalachia. I'm Corey Terry. And I'm Jordan Collins. And welcome to episode number 17 of the Hyman Cast. And we got a big week ahead of us now, Jordan. Yeah, a gargantuan week. Yeah, gargantuan. What a big word I used yeah, right then. Yeah. I'm sure many people are impressed. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they are. Probably very much not. so. I'm not. No, nobody's ever impressed with us. That's fine. Um, yeah, yeah, but we got a big week. It's the Appalachian Riders Workshop this week. And we got people on campus, and it's exciting. Exciting times. Yeah, Lots of things happening. It's our first event since COVID, so it's uh, it's nice to have people back on campus. Yeah, and so far nothing has failed. Nothing has broken. It's because of our skills. Yes, our skills. Us- usually during writers' workshop, something always goes terribly wrong. Like the one year, I think it might have been like a couple of years ago. The everybody was staying in the quilt maker in and the power. That was when I was working on maintenance staff, and mm-hmm. was over there, and the, we went and shut the power thing off, and sparks just went flying everywhere, and we had to condemn that building that day, <laughs> kick everybody out. So uh, things sweet. like that usually happen on weeks like this. Sweet but, memories. Yeah. So. But yeah, without a hitch so far, knock on wood. Knock on wood. And uh, this week, we got two special guests with us, um, joining us, uh, both faculty and um, participants in the Writers' Workshop. We got Miss Annette Clapp Saddle and a second time guest, Mandy Fugit Scheffel, owner of the Red Spot and Newt. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Corey. And uh, how, how's things going so far here at the Writers Workshop? I think it's going great. I'm excited to be on campus and see some familiar faces off screen for once. So yeah. It's a special place to be. Is, is this sort of the uh, first? sort of writer's workshop that's happened this year that's kind of in person or are they happening around or how's that going? I haven't been to any other ones. So I th- this is the first one that I'm aware of that's in person. This is the only one we're concerned with. <laughs> that, that, that's <laughs> that's true, right. True that's, story. that's the answer I really wanted. That's the right, yeah. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So um, we've had Mandy on before and uh, if you sh- everybody should go back and listen to that episode. I think it was episode three. Um, we talked about um, you, Corey, our bookstore. Yeah, I mean, I've looked at the looked at it so many times. The list of podcasts and all that stuff. So it's yeah. it's in here somewhere. I should probably look at it a couple times. But, yeah, you know, whatever. Uh, so go back and check that out and hear her story, uh, how she came to the writers' workshop, and was, was that twenty nineteen when you first came? It was. And then she opened up the Red Spot and Newt Bookstore, which is here on campus this week. It's. It's mobile this week. Uh, so we got uh, her books on sale there and all that good stuff going on. Um, I'm curious. Um, so I, I, I've noticed your all's friendship, and that's why I was really excited to have you all both on because I knew it would be a fun episode. Is, is, is the friendship, is that something that was born out of that writer's workshop too, or did you all know each other before then? Oh, no, no. It, no, it was, it was born last year, I guess, when we um – I think part of the appeal of the Appalachian Writers Workshop is more so the people than the work that takes place here. So last year when we had to be virtual uh, because of COVID, uh, another uh, workshop participant and myself decided probably uh, (laughs) not our best call, but we decided to get other, you know, past Writers Workshop participants and get a cabin in the gorge Um, so there were five of us that decided to get a cabin and um, you know Rachel had met Annette at a at a reading and we hadn't met at all prior to to getting together last year so um, we all got together rented the cabin no one got COVID thank goodness so lucky (laughs) and uh, and we participated virtually but we you know we tried to um recreate the magic that's here in Heinemann. So we, you know, we went off our separate ways and worked during the day, but got together in the afternoons and had dinner and the, the porch sitting and the whole nine. So it was... Um, How did it compare? Well, it, it can't, obviously. <laughs> we did not do a good a job as you guys in creating that environment. But out of that week, my friendship with Annette was born. That's wonderful. So it's just meant to be then. You guys just 
happen chance fell upon each other at the cabin. It's true. It's our origin story. <laughs> that is our origin <laughs> yeah, yeah. origin story. story. I was thinking how I'd how I'd fit it in there, but you beat me to it, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got to get an origin story. Oh yeah. So we, so we didn't put that into the notes here. That is right. It's yeah. it's almost like I don't know who I am anymore. Yeah, you, you've forgotten your ways. <laughs> it's troubling. <laughs> Yeah, so, so yeah, the the writers workshop has has born a bookstore and a friendship. It's, it's, it's a legacy now. Oh, wow. <laughs> so cheesy, Corey, but I love it. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so since you already touched on it, what is your origin story in that? Of my existence, or as a writer, you know, let's go with this. Let's go with all of it. <laughs> yeah, we want to hear. I think, I think the origin story is the existence, like from yeah. your birth. Oh, okay. Like, yeah, like where you were born. Yeah, how things. What was life like growing up? It uh, was a chilly night in March. Yeah, and you and you got to do it in the most creative yes. way you can say it too, since you're a writer. It's Friday the thirteenth. <laughs> no oh. lie. Oh wow. March. Yes. This is one of the. F- reasons why Mandy and I are friends because we were born what two days apart is that right mine's the 19th so well a little bit I can't count so <laughs> less than Neither. a week apart yes. literally same age just a week apart uh, no I'm from Cherokee North Carolina so I was born raised and currently live in Cherokee North Carolina um, and I went to public schools there and then uh, had kind of been writing my whole mm-hmm. life, um, and then went to college. Stop. Go ahead, tell us Stop. where. Stop. Go Stop. ahead, tell us where you I went to college. I know where. I read the. In Connecticut. Bio I went to school in Connecticut. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that seems like that might be an Ivy League college, is it? <laughs> I went to Yale. Then oh. I went to the College of William and Mary, and we're moving on from there. And <laughs> I, then I came, I went back home um, and have been working in and around Cherokee, um, since graduate school, and um, currently a high school English and Cherokee Studies teacher at Swain County High School. Hmm. Fun. Very interesting. My family used to go to Cherokee. They, they have that trout thing down there. The trout derby? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. I only caught one fish, and it was floating down a river. And I was, was going like, to was it dead? Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah. dead. <laughs> <laughs> only that's way. Fabulous. Only that's way. Hey, I was that's like, a very traditional way to catch fish with your hands. Oh, well. Just kidding. <laughs> Why you gotta not crush as, my not brain? As magical as it seemed. <laughs> that hurt my insides because I felt special for like a half a second and then <laughs> took it away. Hurt. But yeah. So um, Annette is the author of a book called Even As We Breathe, which we published on our Fireside Industries imprint. Um, and uh, we've been wanting to have have you on for a while now because we where we try to get all the authors on our fireside imprint on the podcast, but I don't think we started the podcast yet. Whenever you published your book, so this is backtracking, trying to get get that back on here. So, um, tell us a little bit about your book and how uh, how that came to be and and um, what inspired you to write it. Sure. Well, the book wouldn't exist without Heinemann, that's for sure. Um, so I'd started working on a, a manuscript. Um, gosh, I don't know how many years ago it's been now. It's been uh, a few years ago. And um, it is set partly uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, at the Grove Park Inn, and partly in Cherokee, North Carolina. It's the summer of 1942. And the main character, County Sequoia, is a 19-year-old uh, mm-hmm. Cherokee man who goes to work at the Grove Park Inn that summer. And the Grove Park was holding Axis diplomats and foreign nationals as prisoners of war. So um, County goes to work that summer along with a young woman named Essie from Cherokee. And County is accused of being involved in the disappearance of a diplomat's daughter. Um, And so he has to prove his innocence and he's unraveling a, a family mystery back home as well. And then there's Essie. And so there's a little bit of a, a love story that he's uh, working through while he's there. So I got the idea when I'd heard about uh, the Grove Park's role in World War II and uh, st- started working on the manuscript. And I workshopped the manuscript, um, I guess, let's see. I mean, I guess it was my first year here um, at the Appalachian Writers Workshop. And <laughs> um, I was eating 
think it was dinner or lunch um, in the, the main hall here, and uh, Rebecca Gale Howe came over to me, and if you know Rebecca, and you know she's a bit of a goddess, so <laughs> she sat down in her very ethereal way, and uh, she said, I've heard about your manuscript, um, I'd like to read it, and I thought she's being super nice, like, okay, you know, the faculty here is always super nice, and so I said, sure, yeah, she said, no, can you email it to me tonight, and so um, when I recovered after that <laughs> <laughs> request, I emailed it to her that night, um, and she explained to me later that um, that Fireside Industries w- was being started as an imprint with the University Press of Kentucky. So um, I guess a couple of few months later, um, I was at my son's basketball game and um, got word from Rebecca that the University Press of Kentucky um, wanted to pick it up. So um, if it was not for Heinemann, this book wouldn't exist. So I've very fortunate, and then I got the crazy um, call that uh, Silas House was going to be the editor for the book, which is insanely lucky. <laughs> um, and then, if you know Silas, the most humble human on earth, calls and wants to make sure that it's okay that he's my editor. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I guess so, Silas. <laughs> no, Silas is always so nice to us. That one time we went, you know, we went to his house and he made us pour over coffee yes, and pour made over us coffee. really feel at home. I loved it. Yeah. Such a good time. Loved his dog too. Loved that <laughs> dog. <laughs> just, just a little side note I had to throw in there. Yeah. So man, dog. Yeah, gotta pet that dog. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> that just tells me you've seen the video. But uh I haven't. No, they oh, have. Yeah. Uh, no, they I haven't. You have? you haven't. I just want to hear you say that again. Can that dog. I can't go back to about that dog. <laughs> <laughs> but uh Oh my god. Uh, Mandy tells us you have a very unique process uh to get your to write your books. She you know, uh into what I don't know. I'll just let you talk about it and see if we're what? Yeah, tell us about that. Wait, then. which, which process? <laughs> oh, there's more than one. <laughs> I would like if to hear. I was okay with answering this question until you said Mandy told you. That was answer, supposed so. to be left off. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> I don't, do you mean the serious one? I mean, you're biking in it. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. You want to talk about that? Okay. Yeah, I saw you had a little bit of a crash the other day. I do. Yeah, I'm covered in bruises and scratches right now. Yeah, I'm a mountain bike. I also road bike, but mostly mountain bike. And um, it has become really important because uh, I think that that good literature is felt in the body. And so uh, I try to, when I'm writing, I try to um, be engaged physically as well. So um, I'll think a lot about whatever I'm writing, writing while I'm riding a bike, um, which may be why. I crash quite a bit. <laughs> but you, you uh, I guess you're writing in your head. In maybe. my head. Okay, I was like, yeah, no, 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 no. Are you physically trying to write something down? <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good good way to crash. Right? <laughs> yeah, I would say. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's totally changed my process, though. Um, mm. And just because I'm out in the middle of the woods, too, uh, right in the middle um, of the place I like to write about, uh, it, it changes – Sometimes the whole trajectory of a scene, um, just because of something I noticed while I'm out there. So. Is that what inspired the the cover of Even As We Breathe? The I had no say in the cover, oh. but I mean, I, I dig the cover. Yeah. Um, it's a nice book. It is a nice book. They did. The cover is perfect. I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm less of a reader and more of a, I like pretty books to sit on my bookshelf sort of thing. Oddly yeah. enough, so do shoppers. <laughs> you really, they really do <laughs> judge a, books by their cover. Yeah. So, and that true. one sticks out. It does. Yeah, the, um, the artist sent this whole description of how he made the decisions on the cover, which I, did, I didn't realize all of, it was like poetry reading his reasoning for everything that's on the cover. So, that was really cool. I didn't know if that much went into it. I, I mean, I guess a lot goes into it, but I just see a book cover and someone's like, this would look great on here. I don't know. I didn't know there was like a whole whole thing with it. So interesting. Yeah, we, we was doing some uh, research for the box and trying to figure out how we can make our own cover for the box and the labels and all that sort of thing. And we went for the Grove Park theme, you know, mm-hmm. in it theme. 
And then we started looking at pictures of it, and then Jordan was like, I think I've been there. Yeah. Yeah, I just <laughs> came out, and I was like, I've been here. <laughs> this place looks familiar. Yeah, so I spent, I spent a weekend there, and it snowed, but it's a very beautiful hotel. It is massive, too. I have never gotten to stay there. Oh, well. I think they should give you like a free room or something. Thank you. Can yeah. how is this broadcast widely? We can send it to them. I think you should. Yeah, yeah. they really need. So, uh, <laughs> Grove Park Inn, uh, the Hyman, the the Troublesome Boys, and Annette would like a free room. Yeah, I'm just I bring, I'd like to bring my friend Mandy <laughs> and Mandy too. And a spa package. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yes. Can we also get all the employees <laughs> a free room? Just gonna, I'm just gonna throw the biggest ask. Maybe, Maybe that's where we can do our next staff retreat. Can we also judge the gingerbread house contest? That too, I would like to. Oh, do there's that a gingerbread too. house contest it is annually. Oh, yes. oddly enough, I know. I was like, I was like, are you talking about here in Iman? From the <laughs> home of the gingerbread festival. Yeah. Oh, there we also, go. There's the connection. That's, yeah. Yeah, I like it. That's Hyman's festival. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Sell that gingerbread to buy some votes or something. Is that how, <laughs> is that, is that, is that how it went? I don't really. That's what I've heard, but I don't know if that's true or not. But small uh, bread, liquor. I was like, yeah, <laughs> must have been some good gingerbread. You know, <laughs> I lost my place. <laughs> Catch me, Corey, I'm falling. Yeah, that was telling us about her crashes. Right, right. Yeah, your, your riding process. Um, yeah, I guess I was going to ask. Like, so you, I, in the book, I guess you can kind of is that what's kind of motivating your your the way you're describing things is like kind of what you you pictured there in the. Yeah, yeah. One of the best examples is there's this chapter uh, early on where County is uh, caught in a logging pool. Um, he about drowns, and that chapter was probably the last chapter I wrote because I was looking for um, a little bit more action uh, in a scene. And I was on a mountain biking ride with a friend of mine uh, near the. Chattooga River, I think it's where we were, and uh, we stopped, and we're just sitting on the rocks and uh, by the river, and she was telling me, she's like, you know, they used to log this river, um, and I was like, God, can you imagine being trapped in something like that, and then that whole scene came from there, so sometimes when I'm stuck, if I can just get on a bike, um, something kind of pops up. So the meal we're having tonight is... Um Fried chicken and all the fixings from a description in the book is is that a uh, is that something from your child is like from your childhood maybe or from your life or is that just kind of a I was really hungry that day. <laughs> is that what you're thinking about? <laughs> I mean, like seriously, it's some of my favorite food. I I don't think macaroni and cheese was in there, no. and I regret and I didn't know that Hyman was going to do this or I would have thrown that <laughs> in the scene too. Good job, Hyman. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, next book we'll have. I'm going to pay attention to that just in case. You know. Yeah, it feels like a slight setup. You knew you were going to be here. We were going <laughs> to right. make it. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're having some fried chicken tonight, which was going to be our chicken that we grew here, but the freezer happened to tear up last week. <laughs> we yeah. lost all that chicken that we had. Wonderful timing. It's been in there for like a year. Yeah, and uh, we got some corn on the cob that we grew here on campus. Um, Delicious, by the way. We got whipped potatoes. I don't really know what a whipped potato is, but uh, is it basically mashed potatoes? Must have misbehaved. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mashed potatoes without the lumps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> very, very smooth, maybe. It's very smooth. Um, yeah, I don't remember what else was on the menu, but it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it because that corn is really good. I really like the corn. Now, what day is this on? This is tonight. tonight. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and we're having... Uh, our Indian fry bread dessert that we yeah, let's talk about that. we created that I'm glad turned out to be delicious because we didn't really try it beforehand before we started trying to sell it in a box <laughs> and it, it just happened to be amazing. So yeah. it's the Indian fry bread from Sanook yeah. Meal, uh, and that's your family's meal, correct? Mm, that's right. And uh, we are putting that in cinnamon sugar mix, topping it with our Forks of Trouble, some apple butter, uh, some Vanilla ice cream on top of that, and a drizzle of local honey from Windy Hills. So, that's a lot. Wow. That's a lot. It's really yeah. good. Come on yeah. down. I mean, yeah. I loved it. It's it's a delicacy. For it sure. is. <laughs> you got to watch how much you're eating because uh, you'll eat the whole thing and not have any. <laughs> <laughs> 
just wreck yourself for the next three it's days. part of the process. Oh, yeah, part of the process. Add that to your answer. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I ride bikes and I eat fry bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's your bio. That's my bio. <laughs> ride bikes, <laughs> eat, eat fry. fry bread. I like it. But we already went over your mountain bike, and what else do you do in your spare time? Ah, uh, well, uh, I have two sons, so I have a an eight year old and a twelve year old, so they take up a lot of my time. Um, but I've been known to play a little basketball, and um, I, you know, I was going to say I, I like to garden, right? That sounds like an answer I should say, but I've pretty much killed everything <laughs> lately, so. In my head, I like to garden. It doesn't really come to fruition. Um, you know, and read. I like to read books that I order from the Red Spotted Newt. Oh, yeah, the Red in Spotted pa- Newt. In and particular. Speaking of. <laughs> nice what plug. A, what a wonderful segue, That too. is a wonderful segue for the next question. Yeah. Jordan was going to ask. Oh, I'm asking this one? I mean, I don't know. I'll hit it. Why not? Do it. So, <laughs> how, is the, <laughs> how is the bookstore going, Mandy? It's going well. Um... I think given all the circumstances of my opening and survival during COVID, I, I can't complain about about any aspect of the bookstore. Um, it's it's growing faster than I expected, so I'm overwhelmed a lot trying to keep up because it's just me. So um, I've seen that you had a helper in the, in there the other day. I did. I did. Ha- I did get summer help so I could go on vacation, oh. and I believe me, I utilized it. Um, a hundred percent, but um, I think one of the main challenges of that is, though, because it's only been me, people come and expect to see me, so um, it makes it hard to expand. You know, I've kind of thought about maybe doing a second store, but I don't know what that would look like if I couldn't be in Hazard, and and even being set up here, like I have that need to want to talk to people about the books, so... It's um. Yeah, Jordan, it, Jordan's it's a, a bookstore struggle. retailer this week. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> At least for the next two days. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You're leaving. Yeah. Right, <laughs> Kentucky. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in there. I I yeah, got, in all the account. plugs. Yeah, all the plugs. <laughs> Everyone gets <laughs> Get a plug. Them all in there. What do you got to sell, Corey? What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I just want these people to give us free stuff. Send us stuff. Okay, send us stuff, everyone. Like Doesn't Ma- matter. Mandy's who. gonna get us some mugs. Are we getting mugs? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting you some mugs. I'll get oh you some mugs. Boy. <laughs> Look at you! It going. can't top that kitty cat. Kitty but cat. Yeah, just yeah, hold for, that up there. Just for you. There we go. That's kitty cat. This is my girlfriend's mug. I ran out of mugs for this week, so I grabbed one randomly, and I thought this was funny, so I went we'll with it. We'll get you a new nice. mug. Yeah, it's okay. I'm it's, looking forward to it. seeing free stuff. I think one of the um, things that that I didn't get to do last year are the events from from uh, being on lockdown for COVID. So that's. That's what I'm excited about the so, most. So what you got planned coming up? So on July the 27th, we have Alan Maiman, who um, just recently re- released a book called Twilight and Hazard, where he uh-huh. kind of talks about his time in Hazard while he worked for the Courier Journal. Um, details on that I haven't really released yet. I think we'll probably have to move it to a bigger venue because the nude is tiny, so mm-hmm. I don't know if I can get enough people in there. Um Shauna K. Rodenberg from, uh, she's a Letcher County native. She'll be in on August the 7th to uh, promote and sign her book, Ken. It's her recent memoir release. And um, on August the 21st, we have an event called Reading and Vittles that's going to be at the art station in Hazard. Uh, it's going to be a ticketed event. Tickets will go on sale August the 1st. And it's um, kind of just a culmination of Appalachia. I mean, it's writers and Vittles, Vittles. hence the name, <laughs> Reading and Vittles. So Annette's going to join us, um, Robert Gop, Ronnie Lundy, uh, Laura Smith. Oh, you got a full house? So, yeah, I'm super excited. It's like the Woodstock, basically, of, oh, the, yeah. of the literary world. The <laughs> Appalachian Woodstock. Thank you. Wait, is this the seat at the table thing? It is. Oh, okay. It is. You're yes. going to that, Jordan. I'm going to that? Yeah. Lit. <laughs> <laughs> and we, we used the book, um, The Food We Eat, The Stories We Tell. That was kind of our inspiration. Oh, yeah. And Mandy's selling that this week. So. Yeah. I guess it, it. she has at her store. Available now. It, this will probably yeah. come out next week. So, <laughs> But it's there. But come to the Newt and get it. Yeah, come to the yeah. Newt. Yeah, come to the Newt. The Newt. So I'm excited about that. I mean, that's the whole point for me was 
to establish some kind of literary community that I felt like didn't exist. So I think you've done a very good job of that. Thank you. Yes, indeed. It's a very cool place. Um, I remember last time, I feel like you were t- trying to find uh, like a bigger spot. Are you still doing that? Or are you like, are you home now? Shh. Oh, okay. No, oh. I, I mean, it. I probably could at yeah. this point, yeah. Um, but now I struggle because the building is so iconic in Hazard. It's true. It's and I've used it in my branding. Yeah. And I think they're fans of the building just as much as they are the bookstore. So, oh, for sure, though, I already think... I think I could. I think there's enough business uh, to support a bigger location, for sure. I don't even know how you'd get around that. That's you almost have to build the same building again. It's like a Dairy Queen or something. It's <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> the Dairy Queen has like a basic shape. You know what a Dairy yeah. Queen looks like. That's yeah. actually a really good idea, Jordan. That's yeah. I mean, just uh, now I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Can like you start serving blizzards. I, yeah, really no, <laughs> cannot, I cannot serve blizzards. <laughs> I'd love I if you did. I thought about that. doing a rooftop deck, though. I had thought about that for, oh, re- for readings, like a like a party deck. That's cool. Yeah, really cool. And then you just like look over, look over hazard, and just yeah. oh god, yeah, I'm we about should, it. We I'm could have those in heaven when we st- when we started our coffee shop at the artist. Sh- sh- <laughs> <laughs> away all the secrets. I didn't say that. Didn't say nothing. Nothing's happening. It's fine. Don't listen to Gordon. It's probably true. Nothing's happening. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Uh, so Mandy is a writer in her own right, and you got a you got some news right before we hopped on here. I, I couldn't, I didn't really catch what it was because I was stressed out trying to fix these cameras. But what, what's going on? Okay, so <laughs> I have an op ed that I wrote in response to Twilight in Hazard, and I, I just felt like it. For me, it felt like a single narrative that was still just so prevalent now. Um, when literature's talked about in Appalachia, this seems to be what we keep hearing. And I felt like I had a story that was not like his, um, that what I experienced during the same time frame that he was in Hazard, I just kind of felt like maybe I needed to share mine too. So you kind of get a full uh, spectrum of what Appalachia looked like during that time. So, And I felt like I had something to say. And, you know, I think... um, He's a journalist, so I mean, his book is really well written and it's credible. And um, but I just, I just wanted to give give people um, maybe another a viewpoint on what that looked like for somebody living in Appalachia. So is, was was he from here? He's not from here. No, yeah, I think he's from Jersey originally. I think that's a lot of her problem. Is yeah, people come in from the outside? And he spent six years here, I think. So oh, well, he lived here. He's he was the. Uh, Eastern Kentucky correspondent for the Courier Journal, okay. but um, so I think I'm not. I've not confirmed this because I got the text and then just threw my phone down. <laughs> um, I think the Lexington Herald Leader has picked up that op-ed. So, yeah. sweet. Hopefully. And when will that? If it if it comes out, when will? When will oh, I have out? no idea. Okay. But yeah, I mean, there may be some edits that have to be done. I don't know gotcha. if they. I don't know if they took it as is. I mean, I didn't even get to respond. So okay. We'll yeah, see. keep a, keep an eye out for Mandy. She's yeah. You should always keep an eye out for me. <laughs> <laughs> Solid don't advice. Be blindsided by Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> so, you got your op-ed in the uh, Lexington Herald, and and that you got your book published. So, how does one get to that get to that point in their uh, writing career? How do you get from, you know, scratching some notes on some paper to having a book or having something in a newspaper or literary work? I mean, I don't think there's one single path, that's for sure. Uh, But I I do think it is just kind of relentless work um, and being willing to to take feedback. Um, But also knowing, you know, being very clear on on the direction you want to take and being true to what your story is. Um, And just knowing Mandy and where she's been with this op-ed, knowing where I wanted, even as we breathe, to go – you know, that there's a fine line between uh, soaking in all of the feedback you get and critique and, and working with that and learning from that, um, but also uh, knowing who you are and knowing that you want to present your your most authentic story, even if it's fiction, right? You know, there's a, a viewpoint that you want to stay true to. So I think 
how do you get from one place to the other is just kind of this relentless work and um, and believing in in what you have to say um, because the steps there, the actual steps there, are different for everybody. I think. So I guess there's like a lot of soul searching involved in figuring. You know, yeah, figuring there, out your yeah, path. Some breakdowns and whatnot, I think, yeah. Like you have to be your own cheerleader all the time yeah. because there's a lot of rejection, um, a lot of hard advice to take sometimes. Yeah. So, yeah. That's probably where I would uh, I'd I'd probably, probably crush my soul. Yeah, <laughs> I was about to say <laughs> pretty, that's pretty much instantly. That's where I throw in the towel. And start, <laughs> they're like, you're bad. I'm like, God, <laughs> never write again. I thought it was that's so That's it. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but I've had a couple rejections in my life. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't new to them. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! All right, I'll let you hit the next one, Corey. All right. Um, so, what is one thing? I guess we're going, we're circling back here. Jordan's questions are way out of order, um, but we're we're circling back here. You said you wanted them to be all over the place. I, I didn't say. And that. here we are. <laughs> here we are. You're all over the place. All over the place. Uh, what is one thing that you want to? readers to take away from your book, Annette? I, w- I want readers to take away um, our ability to um, use our commonality uh, to solve future problems. So th- what I mean by that is it, the entire time that I was writing Even As We Breathe, I never once thought of it as a historical fiction novel. I only kind of clued into that in my, you know, in accepting it when um, I was working on the marketing plan with the press. That, oh, yeah, this is historical fiction. Uh, because I think of all of the issues that come up in the novel as very present, right? Issues of citizenship and belonging and race and class. Um, and, you know, and, and on the other hand as well, um, a lot of Native literature has reinforced stereotypes about Native peoples. And so what I try to do in the novel is bring those to light and show um, really our commonalities that um, amongst all people. And then, you know, how, how do we look at what we've done in the past in this country um, as we approach kind of the same problems, mm-hmm. you know, of 1942 we have in, in 2021. So how can we learn from that? Um, from a common, a place of commonality. That, you know, like you said, that seems to be a real problem. Is you know, history seems to repeat itself. It's because people they're forgetful, I guess. You know, they don't, they can't look back on the past and learn from mistakes, so they just keep over and over again. So, for reals, for, <laughs> for that, was, that got deep, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies. <laughs> And now we're back. I mean, I mean, also there's fried chicken and <laughs> <laughs> bougie hotels, bougie hotels, yeah. so bougie. That's <laughs> whipped taters, <laughs> whipped taters, <laughs> real. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Andy, what's uh, what's something that you want to accomplish? You know, in the long haul with your bookstore, what do you? What is your legacy? You know, I we like know your that. origin, but what is your legacy? I like the legacy question. That's a good choice of words. Um. I th- I think I d- when I started the bookstore because I wanted there to be a community here. The writers are here, but there was no place for the community. There is no place for them to gather. Um, I think there's so much talent here, and no, there was no home bookstore, which I think every writer needs somewhere that they know, all right, this person's going to promote me when I put a book out. This person's going to have me do a signing. But also... Um, I felt like I needed to make an amends to the community um, for some things just sent from my past, and I, I felt like this was this was my way to to give back and do that. And I wanted to be sure that the kids in this area knew that that was an option. You know, I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of children in this area that don't that aren't able to leave, so they have never even been in a bookstore. Mm-hmm. So I wanted there to be, you know, that they would see what that looks like. I think you have to see something in order to achieve it. I think you have to see, be able to see yourself and somebody else doing it. Mm-hmm. And so that was my hope was that, I mean, just in all that it created some kind of literary community. Okay. So I guess your 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 kind of dream, your legacy is, uh, it's not really as much as your bookstore as it is the people around. Oh, your yeah, bookstore, absolutely. Yeah. I just I just hope that it. Yeah. 
I just need to make enough money to survive. But, uh, the, yeah, the community is what I want. Yeah, so everyone support the red spotted newt in Hazard. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to plug it again. And we get a free mug. <laughs> <laughs> and we get a free mug. <laughs> but, yeah. It's time for the lightning round. Again, Corey didn't get me sound effects. so that's <laughs> Okay, we I, didn't know he was doing this podcast until great. this morning. Yeah, well, so I asked you like three weeks ago. That's true. I could have already had it done anyway. That, that's but. right. <laughs> but lightning round. All right. So first off, if you could put one thing in a time capsule to be open 10,000 years in the future, what would it be? Wow, 10,000 years. I wanted to make sure that it was just so far that they'd have to think about it. So. <laughs> You've you've stumped wow. them. That's the point of the lightning round. <laughs> Go ahead, Annette. Answer that. I'm going to say even as we breathe. There you oh. go. Beat her to the punch. <laughs> I'm going to say Mandy. <laughs> <laughs> You're living the next 10,000 years oh. in a time capsule. I don't think that was the point of that. In case <laughs> <you're being brittle. laughs> I don't know if she wants her to live. <laughs> I'll let you get the next one. All right. Um, if you could meet any person for the first time, alive or dead, who would it be? Wow. Yeah, I thought yeah. these up. Did you come up with these, Jordan? I always come up with these. Oh, man. Um, yeah. I have weird. always, this is like a, Nerdy answer. I've always wanted to meet Albert Einstein. That'd be like, cool. I just think he's a cool dude. I wouldn't understand most of what he said, <laughs> but, you know. Smart guy, though. Big brain. Big brain. Many wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Has okay. a lot of wrinkles. Yeah. I suppose. Oh, man. Did you say alive or dead? Alive or dead. No, they just dead said alive. Or and alive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have an answer for this. I mean, I want to say Oprah. Oprah? <laughs> that would be phenomenal. I need you to meet Oprah. Yeah. Do you know who Oprah? That's just an inside No. <laughs> no it's oh. going to happen. Yes, that's an inside besties. joke. Yeah. That's I was true. like. No. <laughs> I, I would honestly, Oprah, if I'm you're listening. Say, yes. <laughs> Oprah, Here's yes. another fun. Oprah's book club. We got a lot of people we got to get this out to. Yeah, please, Oprah. <laughs> please pick us up. I'm going to say JFK is, is my honest answer. Oh, Oprah's just an inside joke. But oh, God. I'm glad that we were privy to it. But <laughs> no, <laughs> That's my honest answer. JFK would be cool. That's yes. Cool. You know, he could read 1,600 words a minute. That's pretty Random impressive. facts. I'm filled with them. It's crazy. They're not useful hardly yeah. ever. Jordan doesn't remember anything he does each day, but he remembers he random remembers facts like that. How much JFK can read? Why do you got to come at me <laughs> like that? Because uh, there's a lot of days that that aspect of you really bothers me. So, well, Corey, there's a lot of things about you that bothers me. So, <laughs> sure. <laughs> come at leave? me, bro. <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> what is one word that describes you? <laughs> <laughs> I can't say it on the air, can I? No, you can't. Okay. <laughs> was it was it said earlier today? Pro- she calls me this often, but yeah. probably. And it's really honest. <laughs> That's a nice way to put it. Okay, so yeah. odd. I guess the better question would be: How would you describe each other? See, with one word? I think. Okay. Flip it. <laughs> that was mine. Oh, okay. Honest. Honest. Um, I would say Mandy is genuine. genuine. I wondered if that could even be summed up in one word. Yeah. No. Mighty fine. <laughs> that was a short one. I told you some of these are short. Not genuine. 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 Yeah. Hit it, Corey. That's a good like one. that dog. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought this was the same question. No, it's different. All right. If... You lost your sense of smell, which if you've had the coronavirus, you might have. <laughs> <laughs> and could choose to only smell one thing, what would it be? <laughs> this is what my brain looks like all the time. <laughs> all the time. 
Chocolate. Oh, I was going to say chocolate, yeah. Chocolate. 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 And this is a very controversial question that I got Corey caught up on earlier this, today. We're going to go deep diving into this. This is one. a deep one. Is a taco a sandwich? No. Why not? Uh, because the, t- the outer part of it is not two separate pieces. This is what I said. I like that rationale. And he had a good argument against it. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Well, it can be if you just break the bun. Okay. Which I do often. I get excited and that bun <laughs> just splits. <laughs> That's when I get a new bun. Is a, sa- is a Subway sandwich a sandwich? Because it's essentially a giant hot dog bun. Broken. Yeah, but it's But it's together. No. Oh. The back oh, is you're right. Like Subway it. workers than I wow. do. Wow. That's right. So um, much thought into this. Mm. Yeah. I, this is my brain. <laughs> no, a taco is not a sandwich. But it's sandwiched. I think there's a cultural divide. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah. if you put a hot dog inside of a tortilla? Shoot. Which I do sometimes. Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really a pig in a blanket. That's right. probably a better. <laughs> That's, That's cultural also. So. <laughs> That is true. So if you put a hamburger in a hot dog bun, does that make a hamburger a hot dog? Or does the hamburger become a sandwich? The hamburger is a sandwich. Yeah. Okay. Because when you go to a restaurant and look at the menu, it so says, it's not the bread. It that says sandwiches. It, but it's not the bread, right? Because oh. the hamburger, if you just put the hamburger by itself in a hot dog bun, <coughs> it's no longer the bread, right? Because then the hamburger is. I thought just about just let this. them be. We don't need these labels. Just, just yeah. let them, yeah, oh, just yeah. Let them be what they are. No labels, no just. Label. Yeah. I just wanted the world to know. Let, <laughs> let them self-identify. Right. How does a taco identify itself? That's a better question to ask. <laughs> if you were a taco, how would you identify yourself? There you go. Tasty. There you go. <laughs> Probably pork. I do like a taco. Yeah, a good pork taco. Solid thing to end on, though, right? Solid, mm. solid. Completely yes. empty question. Food. <laughs> Yeah, that's really all I've thought about this week is food. I'm just excited to eat. Yeah, I'm excited to eat till Tuesday. Even though I didn't eat lunch because I wasn't really hungry and I don't like tomatoes. I don't. And like it was tomato pie. I don't like the mayonnaise in it. So. Oh, there's mayonnaise in it? Uh, that's what they tell you me. You wouldn't know it. Just, just try it. I, I know it's there, though. I think <laughs> I actually had tomato pie one time and it was fine. There's enough cheese on it to hide the tomatoes. It yes. seems like pizza. Yeah, it Basically like pizza. Basically like pizza, but... Yeah. What meal are you almost looking forward to this week? I'm looking forward to the even as we breathe meal tonight. <laughs> the, to- I, to- the tomato <laughs> pie probably was, or the or Fridays. Yeah, the lasagna. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's yeah, what I'm looking forward to. I meal. love a good lasagna. Yeah, perfected <clears throat> by Shirley Ratliff. Yeah, she makes a props to Shirley Ratliff. Yes, is this she gonna makes be good a meat dumplings. lasagna. Or I, I, I think there'll be a non meat option, but I'm not, no, I'm not. I need. I don't usually prefer vegetarian lasagna, so I just wanted to be sure before I gave you my answer. So you were you were more looking not for if there was going to be meat in it. You were just like no vegetables, right? Right. That's, yeah. Gotcha. yeah. I don't blame you. This is the question I just thought of that wasn't on our list. Oh boy, here we go. We got to hurry though because Annette's got to teach a class here That's soon. That's true. We're wasting her time. What are you <laughs> most uh, hoping to come out of the writers' workshop with this year? Either one of you. Oh, I was wondering who this was for. <laughs> um, I hope I'm inspired to finish what I'm working on. And I and it time intends to do that for me. If I'm in a rut and I'm not really nothing's really progressing, I don't I don't write while I'm here, but I I can leave here and feel recharged and think okay. I mean this is. There's people here that will hold me accountable. You know, they're it's back to the community and the support of other riders. So I hope I can leave with a little fire. Hopefully we can supercharge that. <laughs> we get a little spot in the book. Right. <laughs> yeah. You whenever you get a book published, you gotta put us in the Of course. The, what, what's it called? Whenever you do like a dedicate yeah, the dedication. Oh, the whole dedication. This not, is dedicated. not just acknowledgements. They want it dedicated. A whole dedication. dedication. Okay. Troublesome Creek. Boys. I'm not going to over ask, so I'll take an acknowledgement. Okay. <laughs> That'd be fine and this too. one goes to Kitty Cat. <laughs> Kitty Cat. 
Kitty cats. <laughs> it's a left-handed mug, which I didn't know until today. But. And then I saw I saw a, a light bulb go off. When I, did you did you have an answer? Yeah. Well, I actually, even though I'm teaching this week, so it's yeah. a little different experience for me. Um, I would agree with Mandy. Like, I'd like to leave here inspired to finish the project I'm working on now. So, um, I'm looking forward to learning from the participants in my class. Hopefully, you know, I hope that they come away with with something that will be helpful to them. But, um, yeah, I'm looking for that that final kick in the pants <laughs> to to finish my current project. It's gonna be next year's slogan: Appalachian Writers Workshop, a kick in the pants. <laughs> <laughs> Not only for the participants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Annette's got to get to class and get to teaching. And, uh, yeah, we thank you all so much for coming on. Thank you, guys. Fun convo. And uh, we'll get to some announcements and all that good stuff next. Yeah. Probably next week, probably. No one else. We're going to do it now. Oh, we're doing it Actually, now. Actually, we're not going to do it now because I haven't got them yet. we got to go get that stuff first. <laughs> all righty. Okay, bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And with that, Annette and Mandy have left the building. We are feeling the smooth beats today, aren't we? Yeah, you know, I, I'm always listening to some lo-fi while I'm working, so. Yeah, feeling that smooth stuff just makes you want to just lay down, contemplate life. Or finish 30 tutor, tutor paperworks. There you Paper go. Paperworks, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, as always, we want to get to some announcements and all the good things going on here at the Settlement School. And Jordan, what do we got going on? Yeah, so we got evening readings through our writer's workshop, and I was wrong in the podcast. Corey told me it's going out today. So, Well, that decision was just made. Oh. Like, I'm going to get this out today. This decision was just made, so <laughs> coming at you live. Uh, but these, uh, we ha- we're having evening readings, and you can reach those on our Facebook, or you can see those on our YouTube page, and you can subscribe and get notifications when those are ready. Yeah, so we'll be live streaming. We hope that it goes well. It will. We say prayers. <laughs> yeah, so tune in each night this week to the evening readings. And uh, we also want to announce um, something we got coming on. If you all may have tuned in a couple months ago to a live stream we also had going on uh, called What's Cooking Now and with Jenny Williams and Jonathan Piercy. Um, that was a one-time thing for Agrilatcha, but we have now made that a, a permanent thing that we are going to be doing on a monthly basis. And uh, as we will talk about here in the announcements here in a little bit, we just got funded for that, and uh, that will be coming up in August. Yeah, we've basically become a TV, TV studio. Yeah, we so. are a TV studio now. So we'll be hosting a monthly cooking show called What's Cooking Now? Uh, cooking Now. What's cooking. cooking? Exclamation, not a question. It's, a, it's an exclamation point. What's cooking oh. now? Yeah, exclamation point. Not what's cooking now. Oh, I thought you I thought you were getting caught up on the G. I was like, oh, oh yeah, no, that was my first mistake. Yeah, we, got a, we got an apostrophe. But yeah, so be on the lookout for more information about that coming up, and it's going to be awesome. Mega cool. And... As always, we want to um, thank some of our donors and the people who have supported us in the past couple of weeks. And uh, we just recently um, had the NSDAR Continental Congress take place. I think it was more of a virtual thing, but yep. uh, Will Anderson, our executive director, went down to, I think it was Alabama, is that where he went to? I believe so. Alabama, and they had a schools meeting there. And we want to thank the friends of the DAR schools uh, committee for uh, giving us twenty thousand dollars toward our programming here, and the junior membership committee who gave us thirteen thousand nine hundred dollars at the Continental Congress. So thank you all for that. We would also like to thank the uh, Kentucky Humanities Council for helping us fund What's Cooking Now to make us the TV empire that we knew yeah, we were born to be. They indeed. donated eighteen thousand dollars towards that. So thank you very much. Yeah, so eighteen thousand dollars. This is going to be a lit tv show bougie tv <laughs> show <laughs> yeah we're going all out and i also want to thank the san diego chapter of the daughters of the american revolution for sponsoring a square dance that'll be coming up um at a, the, is that uh, november i don't know I feel like it's it might be november 4th you'll see yeah just keep in touch with I'm us i'm not sure if it's been scheduled yet so i didn't oh. look that far ahead but i'm thinking of something else then that'll sorry be, i mean it might be but it's coming up yeah. Be on the lookout for the square dance. 
Um, so yeah, uh, as always, thank you all so much for tuning in to the Hyman Cast, and I think we got some more writers workshop podcasting that we're going to do this week and yeah, put I'll, them in the can yeah put them in the can and uh, i will not tell who those people are you'll just have to wait and see it's a secret yeah all right we thank you for tuning in and we will see you next time my name is Corey terry and i'm jordan collins peace out solid exit the hindman cast is brought to you by the faithful and generous supporters of the hindman settlement school for over 100 years, we've been celebrating heritage and changing lives in central Appalachia. If you're interested in supporting the work of Hyman Settlement School, you can go to our website at www.hyman.org, or you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the handle at School.